just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Get a gun. Hello and welcome to episode 211 for Slamfire Radio. <laughs> Today is June 15th, 2017. That doesn't even make I'm... sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Adriel Michaud. And I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly. And what? I'm Giggles McGigglebutt over here. McGigglebutt? <laughs> McGigglebutt. You can tell Trevor's not on. Uh, how? Again. How'd you tell? Hmm. 211. 211. 211. He doesn't come on the shows that have an and in them. Yeah. You guys ever notice that? Mm. It's weird. Did you say it was for June 15th? Because that's what's written down, but... Oh, yeah, I totally did. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I just read the teleprompter, man. Yeah, it's actually June 22nd, but you'll be hearing this June 23rd, I guess. 22nd. 22nd. Yes. (laughs) I'm keeping up. Just hold on. Uh, There you go. (laughs) All right. Want to redo uh, it? No. No. Okay. No. 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 I don't like to edit. So we're just going to we're going to keep it. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's June 23rd ish. Well, it will ish. be by the time they hear this. Yes. Right. All right. Our All right. Uh, what 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 we did in guns this week is brought to you by Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. And uh, if you head over to their thread on CGN, they have a 1918 A3 Bar 30 odd six. Really? So if you were, yeah, if you're looking for one of those old Colt bars, they've uh, they've got one, and it looks. Did you say 30 odd six? <laughs> yeah. I thought you did. Uh, <laughs> uh, my goal is to give Trevor an aneurysm tomorrow. So. Well, we gave him one last that? week, I'm sure. So. <laughs> Uh, well, in, in in good, you know, this will cheer you up. He's currently sitting at the airport. He has completely missed his connecting flight. And oh, really? He hasn't even taken off yet, so he's already had an aneurysm. So <laughs> he can have another one probably. Uh, oh dear, yeah. poor guy. All right, Matthew, uh, do you want to take us off with uh, what we did in guns? Sure. So far, I have been to the range twice this week, both times with Mark's eight hundred two Plinkster. And I also brought my Marlin 70, which is the Papoose, and I also brought my Lee Enfield. And my Lee Enfield is a a Lee Enfield. I forget what it is now. Mark 2? It, no, okay. Mark Four. Wait, what are the, what are the marks? I don't even remember. It's been so long since I've done Millsurp stuff. This well, gun just it it hangs out behind the door in my computer room, and just the bolts locked away, and it just hangs out there, bolt out, because of course that's legal, because no bolt, it's safe, non restricted. So it just hangs out behind my door, and I forgot it was there for a while, and then I closed the door to keep the cat out or to keep the cat in or something, and holy crap, there's a rifle back here. Oh, that's my Lee Enfield. I remember that. <laughs> so it's the one with the peep sights at the back. So whatever mark that is, but it's a bubbled one. I got it for like oh. really cheap, like 50 bucks from the, at the gun store because it had gone through a house fire. All that was left was the action, basically, and I needed the bolt. And I ended up not needing the bolt because I found another one somewhere else. So I ended up with this action and bolt and... No stock. So I bought one of those synthetic, like, Monte Carlo style kind of... Actually, it doesn't even have a Monte Carlo cheek rest. It's just like a synthetic Lee Enfield stock you can get to stick on them. I I don't know if it was by ATI or, you know, something like that, though. Yeah. It's actually fairly good quality. It's very... It's solid. It's very rugged. It's got a really nice sandblasted bead finish on it, so it's it's sort of a matte black. And the barrel, of course, was original length, and I, I don't like my guns that long. So I was working at the gunsmith at the time that I acquired it. And so I brought it in, <clears throat> and we hacksawed it down to 18 and a quarter-ish inches. And um, 
we uh, you know uh, put the the crown back on it and put a fiber optic front sight on instead of the original post. So it's it's cool. definitely bubbed up. However, it shoots. I I guess I can post it on the Facebook page. I, I will. I shot a group at a hundred yards with just the peep sight and the fiber optic front sight. And the fiber optic front sight isn't really known for being super precise because it's kind of a big dot, right? Uh -huh. But Regardless, I did fairly well. I put three shots into an inch, just slightly less than an inch, actually. Really? At 100? Incredible. At 100. What's that, Air Jill? <clears throat> That's pretty incredible. It was amazing. So I was very happy with the way this rifle shoots, and it's just shooting factory ammo. Like, I didn't, I don't reload three out three. So I just, I think it's Winchester Super X is the brand. So I would take this gun out, and the elevation is perfect. It's just a little high at 100, which is right where I like it. Um, it's left to right, like definitely within the margin of error for, um, having a fiber optic front sight, <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, I would definitely have no problem taking this out after moose or bear or deer or anything that New Brunswick has to offer me for, uh, for big game for shooting. So it's a, it's a really fun rifle to shoot. I don't shoot it very often because I mean, three out three, I don't get a chance to take it out in the woods and play with it because we got the stupid caliber restrictions here. So I can only shoot it at the range. And if I'm shooting rifles at the range, I'm usually shooting my AR. So, but it was fun to take that out and kind of blast around with it a little bit and had some fun. So I did that. <clears throat> also been shooting Mark's uh, eight Mossberg 802 Plinkster. It's a fun little rifle. It's lightweight. It uh, it it's really ergonomic. It shoulders really nicely. It's got a heavy trigger, which isn't ridiculous, and it's actually getting better just as I shoot it. I've only probably put, oh, I don't know, 200 rounds through it, maybe 300 rounds through it so far. And it's actually starting to lighten up just a little bit. It is getting a little bit better. It's still heavy, but it's shootable. But it's just, I'm not happy with its accuracy yet. I've gotten a couple of really good groups. But at 25, I can't seem to get anything to hold together at 50. It could just be that I haven't found the right ammo that it likes, because there are some guns that just like certain ammo, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, my Axis, uh, no, not my Axis, my PAR, for instance, I mean, that thing will not shoot anything except for the one load that I found for it. And I've owned other 22s. Uh, I had the Savage Mark II FVSR, and I remember that only... CCI standard velocity would hold any semblance of a group with that rifle. Anything else, everything else, it was shotguns at uh, at even 25, 50 yards. Like it would not hold any group. So I think I just haven't found the right ammo for it. I've I've gotten a couple that are better than others, but <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna take some more work shopping around, going out to the range, and finding the ammo that it really likes. But it is a fun gun to shoot. I, I've I've enjoyed it so far. If if it would hold uh, if it would hold a decent group, it would be a lot of fun to play with. Yeah. So how many? How much has he shot it? I have no idea. No? I I don't think, think a, lot. a whole lot um, because he gave it to me and said it's sort of sighted in. <laughs> okay, then so, no. <laughs> yeah, so I I finished sighting it in and uh, tightened everything down and and got it all set up. So I don't think he's put much through it. So. Maybe the groups the will shrink as the barrel sort of shoots in or wears in or fouls in or breaks in or whatever, but I'll, I'll keep messing around with it. I'm, I've got some footage put together so far for the review. I'm, I'm doing a review video for Mark and, and for my YouTube channel, so that's why he, he lent it to me. So I'm, I've got probably half the footage I need now, but uh, I'm really hoping I can take it back out at least one more time and find the ammo that it really likes. But shooting. if if not, I mean, I'll just leave that up to Mark to, to find the right ammo and uh, he can report in and let us know how it does accuracy-wise. But regardless, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the rifle. Like I said, lightweight, ergonomic, fun to shoot. It's just, it shoulders really nicely and uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. So thanks to Mark for uh, for lending that to me again. And uh, and like I said, I had the 70, uh, the Marlin 70 out there as well. The Papoose. The Papoose. And it's in a 795 stock, but no scope. I run it with uh, iron sights only, and I cannot imagine needing any other rifle. <laughs> yeah. I shot it at, uh, I guess it was just 25 yards, but I shot it at 25 yards, iron sights, and off the bench. So we were just off sandbags, and uh, I mean, just about every bullet went through practically the same hole. It was, 
it was an amazing, phenomenal group. I think I sent you guys the pictures anyway. Um, yep. But uh, I, I love that rifle. It is so much fun. There's just, there's no need for, I, I, I don't need anything else. <laughs> I've got other guns. I really like them. My 795s. They all got scopes on them. But this, it's just something, something fun about shooting iron sights. Yeah, and it's a teardown, right? So or a takedown model, so you can uh, pack it away pretty easy. Yep, I do still have the original stock for it. So yes, I could put it back on in the original stock, and then yeah, just unscrew the barrel, toss it in the, the little papoose bag that I have for it, and it goes in the back of the truck or wherever in the backpack even. So it is great. A, a nice little teardown. It's uh, it's really lightweight, which is really nice. It's got the pencil thin barrel, the the takedown barrel. So yep. new shooters, like kids, kids who don't have the the upper body strength to hold a rifle, um, for any period of time, this is a great rifle for them. Because man, if it weighed two and a half pounds, I'd be surprised. Like it doesn't weigh anything. Wow, well, you should get a couple of those for the for the U shoots. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, Does anyway. it, is the length of pull on the on the papoose shorter no, or no, it's not? No, no it, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, mm. it's okay. the same as a seven ninety five. That's the that's the real trick. I mean, it's it's really light up front because it's just got a yep. skinny barrel and no forehand or whatever. But yep. uh, it would be it would be really great if they had a papoose that was uh, that had a really short stock like a on children's it. Children's stock on it. Yeah, I yeah. wonder how hard it would be to cut this synthetic stock that it comes with and then just like mold uh, another back butt plate. Uh, did you did I send pictures of the the job I did on that twenty gauge? I don't think so. No. Oh, I I totally chopped the twenty gauge down uh, a weekend or two ago, and I I cut like two and a half inches off of it. Was that a synthetic so, stock or a wood yep, stock? Yeah, synthetic. And yeah. how did you reattach the base plate or the butt plate? I screwed it in. There the the oh, there was enough uh, mounting points. Yeah, if as long as you don't go too like cut it down too much, mm-hmm. uh, I just had to drill the holes a little bit deeper. Nice. And uh, screwed it right in. Nice. Yeah. That's and then, cool. but then the the butt plate itself had to be sanded down because yes. it was too large. But yeah. that would that's okay. easy. Yeah, I've experienced that before too. I've I've also cut down stocks in the past, and same thing. You just have to sand the, like you just grind the the bit, butt plate to fit it. It doesn't take very much to get that to work though. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, it, that that might be an option then uh, for for people who need a really lightweight gun and a shorter length of pull. Just a, you know, a papoose and a seven ninety five stock that's been cut down. Cool. Yeah. So that's kind of basically all I did. I guess Trevor's not here, so he can't tell us about what he did, which is probably nothing anyway. He doesn't hardly ever do anything. So no archery and that kind of stuff. Yeah. What else? Yep. Like who cares? So I mean, uh, we value your input, Trevor. Uh, Adro, what did, did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been uh, it's been two weeks since I've been on, so I've been up to uh, a bit. I uh, did a, a three gun match uh, that was uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah something like two. That. Yeah, two weeks ago. Well, I remember when you sent us the results like six times because you were so excited. You <laughs> forgot that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I've got, I got uh, I got first overall for yes, time. Yes, you did. That was Sweet. really good. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's the first time I've done that. I've, I've been shooting really consistently this year, so um, it was just a matter of time before uh, uh, someone else like th- throws a stage or something like that. So. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you have to wait for, eh? Like it's it, yeah. you can get pretty good, but you know, I mean, there's chances are there's someone going to be better than you, and whatever it is, what it is, but you just wait for them to have a bad day, and then you can win. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta be persistent, get out there, shoot lots, because they'll have a bad day eventually. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was really competitive. Out of the uh, the top ten shooters, were all really close to each other's times. Um, that's something that hasn't happened in the past. But I think, like as the as the league has been going along, we're all getting better and better and yeah. continuing to uh, push things. And the consistency is starting to get up there as well. So that was uh, yeah, that was really good. Uh, yeah. So I mean. Uh, in terms of shooting, uh, my shotgun was uh, was all good, uh, fully reliable, and uh, uh, pretty quick. Like I, I, I don't think I got number one on any stages, but I was in the top, let's say, top three or top five for for most of the shotgun stages. So you won. Uh, what did you win based on your pistol shooting or your rifle shooting then? Pistol, pistol shooting. I uh, for whatever reason, uh, like midway through the day, I was just on fire with my pistol. Uh, we did a. Uh, like a head-to-head kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, and keep so I'm running an FNS. This is not like a fancy uh, competition pistol <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, you know, it doesn't have like a great uh, single-stage trigger like uh, uh, like a CZ SPO1 or something like that. 
Uh, but like for what for whatever reason, I was just really in tune with it. We we're um, uh, for our head to head, we were running rifle and pistol, rifle far uh, at a hundred yards from standing, uh, and then put your rifle down, draw your pistol, and then do a dueling tree, which has four or six inch plates. I want to say like I want to say four at at about ten yards, okay. and I was just uh, I, and that part for me, I was ripping through it with uh, with that FNS. And uh, and that kind of was how the the rest of the day went as well. My pistol was uh, was on point and uh, and really quick. So I think that's what uh, that that's what made the difference for me. Um, I ro'd the whole day and and uh, it was like the weather was really crappy. It was, it was raining. I brought a rain jacket and then the sun came out and I was like, oh good. Well, I need a little bit of a suntan, so I'll 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 give it like a an hour or something like that. And I burned. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a wicked sunburn. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's what the that's what the start of the season's gonna be like, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, what else happened? Oh yeah. So um, the head to head, I made it to the final round, and uh, I got uh, through the. I, I did my rifle really fast. I did the dueling tree really fast. I got to the last target, and I psyched myself out. Oh. Uh, like the last plate on the dueling tree. And I, I'm just like, oh, here I go. Now I win. And you know what? Ah. That was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now I win. Oh, yeah. No, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. Now I need to change now my mag. Well, now the other guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, that was funny, though. So, like, that I'm, is funny. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, it was a it was a good it was a uh, a really good match. We had um, our uh, um, our timing was really good between the different stages. So um, normally we have two squads uh, that are broken up, and the timing was really good. Um, so we were uh, we we're out pretty quick. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, what else did I do? I had dinner with uh, Mark P, who was our kind of like our range sponsor for the Furlachi did you, course. Did you like go to his place for dinner, or did you like go out for dinner? No, he was uh, he was in Edmonton, so we went to. Uh, uh, so we he didn't make over. you any corn then. No, no corn. Oh, all right, oh. it's whatever. Just eat. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked three gun, and uh, uh, you know, uh, started there. They're starting up a, a three gun uh, club in or league in uh, in the Cold Lake Bonneville area, so we were kind of talking about that, and uh, yeah, it was good. Um, I also I went to the range with another listener, um, uh, Jason, and uh, we went out to the range, and I shot a whole bunch of twenty uh, twos. Uh, let's see, uh, a Remington five nine seven, a Savage sixty four, a Ruger ten twenty two. Um, and then I also shot and tested a uh, TNW Arrow Survival Rifle or ASR. That's like a nine millimeter pistol cal- caliber carbine kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that range was, well, that was good, but we'll talk about the 22s later. Yeah. Uh, I ordered a bunch of AR parts. Uh, so I've, I've, I've got a bunch of AR parts sitting on the, f- <laughs> literally sitting on my, <laughs> on my floor looking at me right now. And I was looking at them and thinking, man, that's, you know, once that bolt comes in from Brown L's, I'm almost going to have another AR-15. I should just build another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, some guys will say like, "Oh, I guess I got this extra safety time to build another AR-15." Yep. <laughs> so I uh, I figured out what it would cost me and all that kind of thing, and and I ended up getting um, uh, a lower parts kit. And a couple of other doodads from True North Arms, which they're they're mostly uh, inexpensive parts, but uh, a lot of them. What's that doing? It's that other PC. Um, and then I got a matched upper and lower from Sa- uh, Saskatoon Gunworks, Saskatchewan Gunworks. One of those guys. They have their sure. those arrow precisions. Yeah. Uh, uh, the upper and lower for one ninety nine. So got that thing. And I think. That's it. Oh, I asked a couple of buddies for like some takeoff parts, you know, stuff that they had sitting in the box kind of a thing. So grabbed a couple off them and it's all ordered and on the way. So sometime yeah. in the next couple of weeks here, I guess I'll be building another AR-15. Nice. Are you, are you going to do a review while you do it? I might do I might do like a Facebook Live, like sit with me while I drink beer and make an AR-15 kind of a thing. <laughs> 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 so there's there's already some like really great videos out there on how to build them. Uh, Brownells has has a fantastic video on uh, on how to build an Air 15. So I can't really compete mm-hmm. with that. 
And I, I don't really, I don't really make videos that uh, you know are already out there and other people have already done a good job on. I kind of want to make stuff that doesn't exist. Uh, so maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll do the uh, the Facebook Live thing. That'll be fun, or maybe a that, YouTube Live thing. Maybe both. That, I don't know. Let's have a beer and build an AR-15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm or out of beer. Beers. <laughs> AR is looking real ugly. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking maybe like a backup AR. So I've got a I've got a red dot sight that I can throw on it, uh, and uh, let's see, 16 inch barrel, and then the rest of the stuff will just be normal. So maybe like a guest AR. So if you guys come out to Alberta oh, yeah. and you want to, that's a great idea. You shoot some. You have guest yeah. towels, guest room, and the guest AR. Guest AR, guest polymer fire striker fired pistol, and <laughs> yeah. I've got guest 22s too. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're all you got lots that. of 22s. Yeah, I got lots of 22s right now. Yeah, I I bought a box of Ely. What was this again? What kind of what was this? Ely Target. Action? I think you called it. Yeah, Action. Um, I wanted to get some more like high end 22 ammo because I've got a I've got a bunch of SK Match and SK Standard, some RWS. Um, I had tried the Ely Club before and I didn't get fantastic results for it, but this stuff's different. Maybe it's better. I don't know. It's pretty slow, 1,090 FPS, so we'll see if it's accurate. Well, I've got most enough... 22 ammo ends up being a bit more accurate when you slow it down, so that stuff might uh, might be okay. It, it's, well, I mean, you probably know this anyway, but it's when the bullet goes through the transonic shockwave that it can tumble or it can start to destabilize, so keeping it below supersonic speeds helps it to stay stable as it uh, goes downrange. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, so, yeah, I mean, I'll... Uh, I don't think any of the semi-autos will really appreciate that kind of ammo, so I might need to run it in my... Uh, I've got a bolt-action 22 that's really accurate, and uh, I might try it in there and kind of see what it does. And if it's really super-duper accurate, I might use it for busting up some gophers. So so apparently I have a Lee Enfield number 4 Mark 1, apparently, ah. is what I have. Number so 4 Mark 1. That's what it says on the side. Okay. Now all the people who've been screaming at their radios uh, yeah. will have... <laughs> Don't have to anymore. <laughs> they finally know what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll take a picture of them and put it up too, because people might care. They probably don't, but whatever. Yeah. Make sure to make sure to call it the wrong thing. Call it like I a. I will. A, this is an SKS. One. It's one of those bolt action <laughs> SKSs. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it yeah, shoots a three it. odd three ammo. Three odd three. three. Odd. Yep. <laughs> How are you doing, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, that's uh, that's it for me, uh, Kelly. What you, what are you up to? I spent the whole entire weekend at the Napanee Rod and Gun Club. They had the Ladies' Day shoot. Uh, They had two days of it. So there was 40 ladies on the Saturday and there was 40 ladies on the Sunday. All new ladies, by the way. So we had 80 new shooters um, get introduced to shooting this weekend. And it was sponsored by the CCFR and Vortex as well. And so they walked away with all kinds of swag, um, T-shirts, which were really cool. And they also got all their ammo supplied for them. And, the, okay, seriously, this lunch was amazing. They had pies like you wouldn't believe. Remember the pies I was telling you about? Anyways, they had barbecue stuff. And, yeah, okay, let's get back to the shooting. Um, they had, <laughs> <laughs> so the ladies all got, there was four different stages. They got to shoot a pistol, so 22 caliber pistols and 9mm. And then they got to go to the... Uh, 22 rifle stage and then they went over to the AR-15 stage and then they went to the shotgun stage and shot uh, 12 gauge. There was no uh, 20s on the line so Um, and then afterwards they got basically free reign. They got to go wherever they wanted to go um, whatever they liked, whatever they wanted to try again but they also brought out the muzzle loaders and also uh, 243 um, hunting rifles and also sharps rifles as well. Ooh, so, that's cool. yeah, which is really really cool. I got to, and also those that were instructing, especially on the Sunday. Yeah, the Sunday I was on the uh, 22 rifles. Um, we had to take the 22 rifles off the line because that's where we were doing the muzzle loaders. And the people that were instructing there got to actually go and help out or shoot whatever we wanted. So. I got to shoot some AR-15s, I got to shoot some Sharps rifles, and I got basically shot everything. And then everybody basically went home and um, 
Kelly uh, Kincaid, who was there with the CCFR as well as I was, we took a group of ladies that uh, just were hanging out, friends of ours, and we went down to the pistol range and we just shot pistols for an hour or two, and they they loved it. It was their first time shooting pistols, so it was lots and lots of fun. And what else? Um, well, yesterday I sent a lending aid, uh, TT to the Ontario CFO, and then within 15 minutes I got it back. <laughs> nice. Yeah, That's they emailed awesome. it back. So I thought that was pretty freaking awesome. Like everybody's complaining about it taking forever in two days, and I got mine in 15 minutes. Sweet. So, yeah, so I'm able to take all of uh, Kevin's rifles uh, with me to the charity shoot because he's going to be flying out, out west after this weekend. We're going to be going to EOSC uh, this weekend and doing two maple seeds. And then uh, the maple seed crew starts across the country. And I'm staying here because of work. I'm not able to go. So I am going to be following. Uh... Yeah, I know, eh? And that's the other reason why I couldn't also go to the CCFR um, AGM is because I'm not able to leave work. Boo. Oh, well, you win some, you lose some, I guess. I know. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, the speaking of the CCFR, we're doing the Gunning Girl calendar again this year, and the deadline is approaching, and we're looking for submissions. So if uh, any of our listeners know of any ladies that might like to be in the calendar, you all got copies of the calendar from last year. It's very classy. We all have our clothes on. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if anybody's interested, send us some submissions to ccfrwomen at gmail.com because uh, we are looking for submissions. So just wanted to talk about that. And that's all I did in guns. I got to shoot this weekend. It was awesome. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll uh, go on to upcoming events. The 7th Annual Canadian Podcasters Charity Shoot is Saturday, July 8th at the Guelph Rod and Gun Club in Guelph, Ontario. It's hosted by the Canadian Patriot Podcast and the International Liberty or Death Podcast. This year's charity is Many to One. And, uh, yeah, this is coming up pretty quick here. Yeah, they're still looking for people to register. A lot of people are saying they're going, but they haven't registered yet. So mm -hmm. if you have been saying you're going, sign up, register, because, again, they're looking for numbers. They need to know what numbers are coming. So get off yep. the fence and sign up. It's easy. <clears throat> Yeah, they're going to have a bunch of uh, prizes and that kind of thing there too, right? Yeah, so Chris Anderson, he's supplying the... Did you guys see the pictures? He's supplying the trophies again this year. And the the, uh, the McClatchy one is there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Got to have the McClatchy trophy. <laughs> yeah, so it's there. But yeah, they have other prizes in that too. Um, suppliers are, are giving them prizes for the event. So it's going to be awesome. And not only that, you get to see Adriel... You get to see Matthew, you get to see Trevor, and you even get to see me. So go sign up, right? Awesome. I concur. Definitely sign well, up. And yeah. If there's fewer people, there's going to be more prizes for us, though, right? Ooh, mm. good call. Mm. Uh, you guys probably don't want to go to this event because it's not going to be very much fun. So you should probably <laughs> stay at home. Besides, Trevor's going to be there, and who wants to meet him? I mean, come on. How does that, that work? Do you think they'll buy that? No. I don't know. You're going to edit this part out, right? Oh, yeah. No, we'll edit it out saying not, not to go? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah no, yeah. I'll, I'll edit yeah. that. No, it's no problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't, for, don't forget. Okay. Of course. All right. Uh, the next one here, uh, there's one spot available for day one and none for day two for the Alberta Pistol Course. Uh, this is, is this is this Handgun Fundamentals or is this the Furlachi Course? We need like a name for this thing. Furlachi Course. Furlachi Course. I like sure. it. On uh, July 15th. Uh, if you want that spot for day one, email Trevor and Matthew at slamfireradio at gmail.com. Uh, the next one we have here is from Ryan McLean. The Meaford Long Range Steel Challenge PRS match will be running September 1st to 3rd at the Canadian Forces Base Meaford. Registration's open. Follow them on Facebook for more details. Uh, let's see. They'll be holding an intro to PRS at CFB Petawawa on July 1st and 2nd. Day one will be a clinic followed by a match Sunday. Cost is $70 for the weekend and $25 just for the match. For more info, email ryan.mcle25 at gmail.com. Uh, next up, we have uh, some three-gun matches. And uh, I'll just, I want to plug my club here real quick, uh, the, the uh, Canadian Historical Arms Society, or CHAZ. Uh, they're uh, the um, 
executive has given the three gun league the entire uh, run of the range for July 8th. Uh, nice. So we're looking at uh, doing a, a much bigger three gun shoot than we typically have. Uh, we're designing stages out to allow for up to 50 shooters. Uh, so for more information on that, check out chazclub.com slash three dash gun, or just search for the Chaz three gun group on Facebook and uh, we'll have some updates on there. Uh, in terms of other three gun matches, the Lakeland uh, three gun match is coming up this Saturday. The mighty peace three gun match is also on Saturday. And on Sunday, we have the South Island Action Shooters Group. So if you're in BC looking for a match over there, there's that one. Uh, coming up on the first here, we've got a whole bunch of them. The uh, Ontario Shooting is, uh, uh, Action Shooting is having a match. The Vancouver, Vancouver Island Three Gun Nation is having a match. And the uh, uh, PAPRC, or the Prince Albert Pistol and Rifle Club, is also throwing a match on. So uh, pretty busy coming up in Three Gun. Uh, next up, the uh, Restigouche Gun Club is running a, a rifle raffle. Uh, the rifle is a Savage Axis in 22250 with scope and case. Tickets are $5 each or free, 3 for 10 or 5 for 20 or 6 for 30 or I don't know what the other ones are. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Uh, Maple Seed uh, EOSC in Ottawa uh, this weekend. There are open spots. Yep. Uh, so, sorry, did you want to talk about the Maple Seed stuff, uh, Kelly? No, not really. You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saskatoon, uh, June 30th. That's a combined youth and adult event. And Grand Cash, July 2nd events are all listed on the event tab of mapleseedrifleman.com. Yep. The Canadian National Steel Challenge Championships are going to be September 22nd to 24th. Uh, these will be the BTSA and Homestead ranges in Kananaskis, Alberta. Cost is $70 for the first gun, $30 for any additional guns. Shoot one day or both. Uh, you may shoot up to two main match guns and rimfire. For more information, check out uh, USPSAalberta.com uh, or register at steelchallenge.ca. Uh, we've got a couple of shotgun uh, events here from Jason. Uh, the first is the Kamloops Shotgun Sports BC Challenge, June 23rd to 25th. Uh, I guess that's this weekend, so register. Oh, never mind, it's full. <laughs> so if you're going to that, you already know about it. Yeah. Uh, the next <laughs> and, one. And if you don't, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the St. Hubertus in Manitoba. That's the CNSCA Sporting uh, Clays, Sporting something. Uh, that'll be August 20th. Uh, Slave Lake is running a, an event as well. They're calling it their Bushwhackers shoot. Uh, June 30th will be the prelim preliminary, and uh, July 1st and 2nd will be the main event. Um, so definitely check that one out. Uh, and that is, I think that's all the events. That's all of them. Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Why don't we go into the uh, Why don't we go into the news? I think you guys skipped all the news last week, right? No. Yes? No. No. So did skip. you read no. about the Quebec gun registry? Yeah. Yes. On this one, probably two. There we yeah, go. Uh, what was the one you just deleted? Yeah, we did the receiver yes. blanks, the the eighty. And you did the other one. Yeah, I heard okay. you guys talk about the other one. Oh, you do remember then? So you did listen. I did listen. Uh huh. Yeah. The, right. the micro podcast part was what made me listen. It's like yeah. oh, <laughs> it was micro. It's still an hour long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not good at microing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this first story. Why don't you guys grab the the ones after it, though, because there's two more here. Uh, this first one is uh, Canadian Elite Special Forces Sniper Makes Record-Breaking Kill Shot in Iraq. Uh, the uh, This is a story of uh, uh, one of our snipers here who made a shot at 3,540 meters. That's Three and a, a half kilometers. Yep. Yep. That's ridiculous. Ten seconds. That's a that's a long time. That's that's a pot shot. If you're if you're shooting at someone and there's a 10 second bullet time, and I think the other things I was looking up was uh, a one mile an hour uh, wind, a crosswind would give you six feet in uh, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. windage change. So uh, this is well, definitely pot shots, but it was he's still connected. He's still connected, and that's what matters. And and he knew enough to point the rifle in the correct direction to to know that a pot shot was even possible. So like he did, I mean that is that that's a combination of an insane amount of skill and an insane amount of luck. Yeah, yeah, and this Maybe. this absolutely crushes the next uh, the next oh, record. Well, the next one was what twenty eight or something. Twenty 
five hundred. Twenty four seventy five. Yeah. Twenty. So twenty five yeah. to thirty. So it, basically, he tacked a kilometer onto the world record. Yep. So guys, I'm just gonna basically just shoot an extra kilometer, whatever. <laughs> just an extra thousand yard or thousand meters. That well, yeah. what's what's three and a half kilometers to to miles an hour or to miles for our uh, American listeners? Uh, Thirty five. Uh, three, uh, I don't know, twenty. So two miles. <laughs> that right? Two point two miles. Yes. Two point two yes. miles. So two point two. Mi- that's that's flipping crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's insane. Good for him. Indeed. All right. Who wants to take the CBC one here? Uh, I. Oh, go ahead. I guess no, go ahead. Ones. No, no. You, 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 you said it first. Go. Oh, okay. Well. Did so the open? next one. Yeah. Go ahead. What? No, no. Yeah, I opened it, but I actually read it too, and I read it oh, before. Oh, good, because I haven't read any of them. So you go <laughs> ahead and do this one, and I'll skim the next one and see if I can come up with some semblance of. Uh... Yeah, you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this uh, story is about uh, a constable for the RCMP. He uh, was kind of a little bit livid uh, about uh, the most recent. Um, there's an inquiry going on right now in Moncton about the the three Mounties that were slain. And uh, how many years ago was that? Three. Three, four years ago. I think. Two or. In two thousand. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, he was livid uh, because of the fact that uh, the testimony wrapped up last week, and Paulson, who is uh, the was the defense's star witness, uh, basically Paulson is the. Um, uh, Commissioner Bob Paulson, and this was um, Corporal Patrick Bouchard. He spoke out against it. Um, basically, Paulson said that uh, the, the the RCMP shouldn't have high-powered uh, carbine uh, carbine rifles; uh, that they didn't need them. And uh, the other thing that he also said that was basically that uh, he was asked if he was responsible for the deaths of the R- the officers, and he said no, he wasn't. So that kind of um, upset uh, a lot of uh, officers. And uh, yeah, this uh, corporal, Corporal Bouchard, he finally he basically had enough, and he sent a letter not only to uh, the commissioner, but he also did an interview as well. So and for him, great great for speaking up, and absolutely, our, our, you know, the RCMP, they need to be fully equipped, and they were also promised that after Mablethorpe as well, so, and they weren't, they weren't supplied it. So, anyways, that's what the gist of the article was all about. All right. Cool. All right. Matthew, um, you got the next one? Yeah, so semi-automatic and sawed-off rifle seized in high-risk arrest of four men in southeast Calgary. So four men were arrested in what police describe as a high-risk vehicle stop. It turned up a semi-automatic rifle, a sawed-off pistol grip rifle, along with sh- uh, ammo. So um, they basically they, they took down this car that they... they saw as high risk and they seized a sawed off semi-automatic SKS mm. which if you look at the picture that's just, well no it's not a it's not a sawed off SKS it's a sawed off no it's a regular it's an SKS and an ATI stock which Trevor loves so <laughs> Trevor's happy they got this and then it looks like it actually looks like one of those Savage 64s that Adriel just reviewed looking at the Magwell it's because it's got the mag catch in the front, the where Adriel thought it was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that was my favorite part. It is. Part. It's it, it's got to be a Lakefield or a Savage sixty four, and that's the one that's cut down. So it's got a cut down barrel and a sawed off stock. So that's the pistol grip uh, rifle, and then there's an SKS. It's a SKS D. Oh, it's it got totally the is. Duck bill mag, and yep. uh, no, it's just a regular SKS. With oh, it the is duck bill. Yeah. Oh. The SKS oh yeah, D yeah. The takes, D has uh, the AK mag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that is a, that is a, a Lakefield that's 64 totally, or a Cooey or yeah. totally. Yeah. So anyway, they uh, they took down this car and they confiscated some stuff. Um, what's really weird is they say that the 22 year old man who is known to police was gunned down in the basketball court earlier this month. So how did he get arrested in this car? But he was killed a month ago. So. Maybe no, somebody... I, I, no. There was uh, the gang's unit was alerted that a suspicious Honda was spotted matching the description. Oh, so the... this Honda may have been involved in the shooting death yeah. of this guy a month ago. Okay, that was worded weirdly. Okay, and then cool. the other thing is the Honda had a funeral tag on the windshield. <laughs> 
Anyway, you had a gang white banger. Bag? Look, I don't mean to be callous or anything, but gangbangers killing gangbangers is. I. Eh. I mean, I I hate loss of life. I mean, that's terrible. I don't. But if somebody's gonna get shot, I'd rather it be a gangbanger than some innocent kid. So. Anyway, whatever. Um, so, so apparently they arrested four guys and they got these very dangerous rifles off the street because, you know, they probably couldn't hit anything with them anyway. No. Well, I'd argue that they're dangerous because of who's like That's who it. has them. That's right? it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they. I'm glad that they got them because the bad guys had them. And this is the only way to make the street safer is to get the guns away from the bad guys. I mean, it's a, it's a lost cause. It's really hard to do, but don't stop trying, right? Yep. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so the cops got some more some more bad guys. So that's bad guys off the street. I like it. Yeah. I like getting bad guys off the street. That's fantastic. But yeah, that uh, that's totally a lake field. <laughs> yep. <laughs> got it. All right. The next one we have here is an editorial uh, page that Jason Phillips sent in. Uh, it's from the Brandon Sun, and it's titled "SKS is more than just a hunting rifle." Uh, so it, uh, I believe, um, there was uh, uh, a mistake that they made where they reported that it was uh, an assault rifle, and uh, I think this is a correction. There's a whole bunch of uh, um, little mini like letters that people looks like they wrote in on this thing, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of interesting because it's like, oh, they, uh, it, it looks like they kind of recanted, they kind of made a correction, so. <laughs> Kind well, of after after we just talked about an SKS being in the hands of bad guys, that's not ironic at all, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somewhat, but it's not an assault <laughs> rifle. It's not an but assault rifle. But you can use it to commit assault. That's so. right. Well, you can use anything to commit assault. So, Well, that, that SKS and that ATI stock is assaulting on the eyes as well. So. <laughs> Trevor would say so, and I would agree with him. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Why don't we, why don't we go on to, uh, to some new gun stuff? All right. All right. Okay, so the first one I had here was um, Wanstalls has the Mission First Polymer 10-round LAR mags. Yep. Uh, so if you're looking for mags for your uh, AR-15, they've got these. They're, they're kind of interesting. So a lot of the ones that we have on the market right now are aluminum, and they're pretty compact, but they have a really um, – the base isn't really easy to grab, so a lot of people – uh, you know, they put on like little covers or little like mag pulls or whatever to uh, to pull them out. Uh, but these actually have like not a rounded bottom, but like a floor plate that's larger than the magazine itself. So if you wanted to run LAR mags in your AR-15, they're not a bad idea. Some guys will will do like a, a floor plate connection kind of a thing for their uh, uh, LAR mags. But if you dump a magazine, you basically stuff like a bunch of mud or dirt or whatever in through the feed lips. Uh, so this one would be if you just want to run a uh, single ten round mags, and they're currently sold out. They are. Oh. unfortunately, <laughs> for twenty five bucks, why wouldn't they be? That's a fantastic yep. price. I mean, I like the way they're curved at the bottom and a little bit bigger because you can stick them in your rifle pouch and it won't fall all the way to the bottom like the steel LAR mags will. So you can yeah, still get your finger on it crap. and pull it out. It might not be as easy as a full length, but it's probably going to be easier <laughs> than than the, the the steel one. Yep. Yeah, a lot easier to uh, to grab onto. Just a little bit more texture as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, S and J is uh, blowing out their short, short barrel shotguns at below cost. They had some. Uh, I believe these were all Turkish shotguns, but they had a yeah, thirteen inch one. pump for two twenty five, which is pretty fantastic. If, you, if you're looking for like a real short barrel shotgun, uh, two two hundred twenty five bucks for a, for a pump is it's not that bad. No, it's not. Not for that. Not for a 13 inch like those. You can you can get like your uh, uh, Maverick 88s and that kind of thing for pretty cheap. But this is cheap and it's for a short barrel kind of a shotgun. So yep, kind of interesting. They have a few of them, different kinds. Yeah, they had uh, um, like a regular one without a pistol grip, one with a pistol grip in stock, uh, one in walnut, one in like the uh, uh, telescopic scope, and then they had a, a couple of different other kinds of shotguns there as well. Uh, the Matador Arms Sabretooth Mark II SKS chassis is out, and it is uh, 350 bucks. So if you're looking at something that uh, will get you going on the SKS, uh, where did I see that one? Colonel Mustard was selling those, and I believe... In where... the living room with the candlestick? Yes. In the living room with the Sabretooth. <laughs> with the Sabretooth. <laughs> 
Uh, what's new on this thing? It's uh, now compatible with the original fixed internal magazine, duckbill style mags, and with SKS, D, and M models. Cool. Uh, the removable dust cover block uh, is also removable, so <laughs> now you can uh, clean it and service it a little bit easier, uh, and it blends in with the chassis when it's uh, when it's installed. Uh, it is recessed at the rear of the receiver to allow the optional addition of a top rail over the receiver. So if you wanted to run like one of those big full rails, you can now. Uh, the styling has been improved, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, a little bit different. It's uh, also a little bit lighter. It went from 2.2 pounds in the Mark One to 2.09 pounds, so just cut a little bit of weight as well. Cool. Well, that's good. Always cutting weight is a good thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. That sentence didn't really make sense, but you know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting weight is always a good thing, is what I meant to say. <laughs> it's keeping a girlish yeah. figure. Yeah. Mm. The next one I had here, this one sounded a little bit weird to me. So the um, North Silva is bringing in these uh, 9mm conversion kits for the Tavor, and uh, I really didn't see the point, but I was just listening to a podcast uh, – from the Three Gun Show, actually, and they're uh, interviewing a gun manufacturer, and they're saying that nine millimeter uh, in in yeah. ARs is becoming a big thing. It's starting to get really get popular. I mean, it's cheaper. It's uh, it's not quite as loud, so um, it, it works perfectly fine within like your hundred yards kind of a thing. I concur. Uh, I'd love to have a nine mil pistol caliber carbine. I, it would just be fun. Yeah, yeah. So they've got the conversion kits there. If you've got the X95 uh, Tavor, you can uh, you can now have it in 223, and you can convert it over to uh, 9mm if you want. Cool. For $1,500. $1,500. Well, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the conversion kit, it's like, damn, that's, like, minus the stock, that's almost a whole new rifle. Yeah. <laughs> They've got, uh, like, the barreled action, the gas block, the, like, it's, <laughs> it might as well be another rifle. Or you can get the carbine itself, the Devor X95 9 millimeter carbine for twenty five ninety nine. Well, there you go. You might as yeah. well. You might Just as well. A thousand more, and now you've got like a whole another rifle that you don't need to like sw- swap back and forth. You can just yeah. own it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Wolverine Supplies has the X Products Can Cannon. One. This is a one. <laughs> one. Wouldn't it be a cool stage gun for, totally for three gun? Want. Yes. Having a can launcher? Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's it, it's it's an upper for an AR fifteen that comes with a super mega oversized barrel that you use blanks in and you stick a pop can down the barrel and then launch it with a blank. Yeah, full pop can. Like right? you, so you, you guys have seen the the golf ball launchers. You just it's a right. muzzle device. You stick on the end of your but this replaces the whole upper and shoots an entire pop can. How much That's, fun would that be? It's got some decent recoil. I saw uh, a lady firing it on. I think it was on the the um, X Products website, and it, <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's a full can of Coke or whatever. So it's got some weight to it, and uh, yeah, it gives a, a nice decent shove. So man, that would yeah. be so much fun. I would. Oh man, that'd be oh five hundred bucks though. That's a little steep, but well, four seventy five. It's a it's a full upper. It's a full upper. Huh. Yeah, you know, for a full upper, it's actually not that bad. It, unfortunately, it's it's basically a it's really it's niche a, product. You yeah, can't, <laughs> you can't really use it for many other things besides <laughs> launching pop cans. Now, my question is, I wonder if the ranges in Canada are certified for pop cans in the burn because <laughs> it goes on an AR, which means you can't shoot it anywhere else other than the range. Uh-huh. But. Um, you know, I guess if you're certified for 50 cal, then I'm sure it'll take a pop can. I mean, I it can't be going that fast anyway. What, maybe uh, 300, yeah. 400 feet per minute or foot per second? Yeah. I don't think the CFO has ever been asked if this is certified for, you know, probably by, not. By, for Coca Cola. Well, I know somebody who built a cannon that shoots cans of soup, and he <laughs> actually got an FRT number for it. Oh, really? And was permitted to shoot it at the range, if I remember correctly. So I guess it can be done. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that'd be yeah. Fun. It's a niche market because you're not really well, yeah. Adriel. You can build it as one of your stages for a three gun. Yeah, the pop gun. You'd have it, to use it a lot. <laughs> it says you can launch other similarly sized objects such as tennis balls, paint cans. That would be fun. Paint T-shirts, cans. T-shirts, a grappling hook. 
<laughs> Why would you not want to shoot a grappling hook out of an it, AR-15? It could be oh. your Batman. Yeah, Batman <sighs> stage. Batman gun. <laughs> it says it but can I reach really like and... the Go ahead. Paint can. I was just going to say, I really like the paint can. Because be you can great paint way a to room paint. And <laughs> you can paint a room in no time. No time at all. <laughs> It says uh, it so it's launches... a home improvement product, honey. It's not a gun. Come yeah. on. It says you it wanted launches... the baby's room painted, didn't you? <laughs> it launches Man. unopened soda cans at 105 yards is his average distance. So that that's smoking. That's going. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yep. It's not. It's not exactly like a ballistically efficient projectile, it, but not quite. <laughs> no. Ballistic coefficient of like negative six. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, finally, the Calgary Shooting Center has Glock 17s in flat dark earth for 780 bucks. So if you're looking at uh, three gun a pistol or just a. Oh, it's not bad at all for That's a Glock a 17. For a Glock. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm so glad that uh, the other, like, there's more competition for Glock now because they, they are a, a, an excellent pistol. But I just think, you know, rewind a, a year or two, and they're selling for, you know, eight, nine hundred bucks. So it's just too much. So I'm glad yep. to see the prices coming in in line with what they should be. I, yep, I concur. Yeah. Uh, any other news that I might be missing? No. I, I, you're, uh, you've got it all. Think, yeah. You, all right. You, you're infallible, man. You nailed it. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Let's move on to the main topic semi auto 22s. Sweet. It's all about they're the boring. Time. Don't They're even not. buy one and uh, buy an AR instead, right? It, or an SKS? Well, my AR is also a semi-auto 22, so if I put the conversion <laughs> oh, kit shit. in it. Right. <laughs> uh, so um, we, we've talked rim fires before. We haven't talked specifically about semi-auto 22s, and uh, uh, I thought that might be interesting. I mean, it's uh, I, we're, we're all shooting them, right? So... Yep. Um, who would we want to start with? Maybe, uh, maybe let's start off with uh, what do we all own in terms of semi-auto 22s? Uh, Kelly, did you want to start? Sure. All my 22 semi uh, 22s are all Ruger 10 22s. I don't own any of anything else. So, that's how many 10 22s semi. do you own? How many? Uh, uh, three, four. Three or four. Can't even. Lost track. <laughs> Don't yeah. even know. I got them by the dozen. Three or four. Sit, sit I th- in a pile. I <laughs> think we have in the closet, we have like 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So there's the takedown. There, yeah, so 10. Yeah, but that. The but takedown 1022 is a sweet rifle. I would I is, would like to have one of those. Yeah. And it's pimped out too because it's got the Magpul stock and everything too. Right. It's pretty much exactly the same as my my regular um, 1022 that I usually use. Um, well, you've got one in a, a, a Boyd pull. stock, right? Nope. It's not Boyd's? What is it? Isn't it purple, though? No. Oh, who's got the purple 1022? That'd be Stacy. Oh, it's oh, that's the one Jewel wants. Jewel shot that yes. one if she wants it. Yeah, that's a cool it's rifle. It's very nice. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But no, uh, mine's in... And mine's almost the, exactly the same as Trevor's. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I have the black make full stock. Yeah. Right. Except for my yeah, except for my I have a crossfire um two uh, scope on it, which is uh three to nine. Mm-hmm. Is it three to nine or two to seven? Mm, two to seven. And yeah. Trevor he has like what something to what is it? Six to twenty four, I think. <laughs> Probably. Which yeah. is an appropriate magnification range for a twenty two. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> you need to be able to see how many but, molecules the fly has on I the target. I was going to say, <laughs> the fly. But, yeah, no, his and mine are almost exactly the same. And right. I say mine, it's because it's the one I use the most. Right. But we have other ones, that, other 22s, but they're not uh, semis. So so what? what is the what is the ammo that you run through? Do you have, like, a favorite ammo that they, they yeah. all like? Yeah. Yeah, so the one that we – so we have a Gila, and it's the high velocity that okay. I I just strictly run that through mine. Um, is that a and, copper wash projectile or just a, a yeah, lead – it is copper no, washed? It, it is copper washed. Yeah. The, uh, the Aguila standard velocity, it hates it. 
Yeah. Um, CCI mini mags, it's okay with, but mm -hmm. I found that the Aguila was more accurate with it. So right. I'm just sticking with what, like when I took my rifle out and tried it out, uh, tried it out a couple of different brands, and when we, when yeah, it just came down to the Aguila. The Aguila runs through it perfectly, and it's and it's spot on, so it's accurate as well. So I don't I don't vary. Do when you I find, find it. that? Do you find that the other 1022s that you guys own also like the Aguila? Yeah. Or do they? Yeah. So no. you so they all they pretty all, much like the same. Ammo? They all pretty like it. Pretty okay. much like it, but it's a little expensive. So, yeah. um, you know, it'll it'll run CCI mini mags just as well. It it'll it's run just not anything. as accurate. No. Yeah. Just not as accurately. Right. So. No. And what but kind of I, do? You, have you shot it for groups at like 50 yards to kind of get a baseline for what it'll do, like off the bench? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sub MOA at 50 yards. And... Well, so, so less than half an inch at 50 yards? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. That's very I took, impressive. I took it out on the weekend. We were shooting. We brought all of the, like, we brought the takedown. We brought Kevin's 1022 and my 1022 uh, for the ladies' shoot on the weekend, and they were all trying it. And, yeah, that's the other thing. They, uh, all the ladies, we were kind of like, Kevin and I were standing beside each other and we were coaching the ladies through it. And so at one point we were, we were, tr it was a competition basically to see who had, which ladies on which team could shoot the most, it was clay targets they were shooting, right? Right, yeah. So uh, they had a really cool target, uh, the, the way it was set up. Anyways, so all my ladies, almost all of them got 10 out of 10. So, and it's because of the fact that, you know, our our rifles were dialed in. These ladies loved it, and um, and the ammo was okay. It wasn't. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Uh, it was provided free of charge. But again, my you know, my rifle is super accurate. So even with uh, the stuff that's not all that great in it, it'll still work really well. And they were they were pretty much killing the the clay targets, all of them. So sweet. Yep. Cool. Well, that's good. But, yeah, sub yeah. MOA for uh, a 1022 is actually quite phenomenal. Yeah, I've had 1022s in the past, and they they did not ever live up to that. Um, well, we I know I've tweaked. Ours are quite tweaked. Mm -hmm. Like we've added everything to it, and as I said, the ammo. Eh, anyways. Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't pull it. a sub sub MOA group from the uh, takedown 1022 that I shot uh, last weekend. Closest I got was 0.69 of an inch at uh, at 50. Hmm. That's still maybe not I'm, bad. Maybe I'm not a bad. Maybe I'm not a good shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, I was, I was I was shooting a center fire rifle later, and I was I was punching some sub sub MOA groups. So I know I'm capable of it. Yes. Um, but I, I, these these rifles with this ammo couldn't. Uh, yeah. couldn't and, and that's anything. what you'll find too. And and sub MOA for a t semi auto 22 is not normal. No. Unless you are willing to spend a lot of time and sometimes money, yep, uh, to to get it to happen. I mean, it can be done for sure. I mean, I've shot uh, Matt's Matt Doucette. He's lent me his uh, Volkwarzen, and that thing, oh, dude, that thing was super sem MOA. Like that thing was very very accurate with almost anything you put through it. So you you it can be done, but that's like almost a two thousand dollar rifle. It's a beautiful rifle. Yeah, like but, it really is. Yeah. But, I mean, typically, I'm happy with uh, a semi-auto 22 if it'll shoot an inch at 50 yards. That's two MOA. So an inch at 50 yards is acceptable, in my opinion, for a semi-auto 22. Obviously, better, or, I mean, smaller is better, but right. if, if I can't shoot at least an inch at 50, I don't even keep the gun. Like, it's, I don't keep it in my inventory. It's gone. So it's, mm -hmm. it's got to be an inch at 50 or less before, uh, before I'm happy with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, Matthew, since since you're on the topic, uh, what kind of uh, semi-auto 22s do you have? Gee, I don't know. I <laughs> never talk about it. I have no idea. What Marlin, could I possibly? Uh, no, semi-auto 22s. It's the Marlin. Is yeah. is my brand. I the only other semi-auto 22 I have in the house that's not a Marlin is the conversion kit for my AR, um, and uh, that thing actually is really cool. Jewel really enjoyed it at the Steel Challenge, but I guess it's not really a dedicated semi-auto 22, so I won't talk about it. Um, at all, actually, now at this point, now that I've mentioned it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Marlin, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, wh why do you only have Marlins? Because that's what works for me. I owned uh, 1022s. I've owned 
uh, Remington semi-auto 22s. Uh, what else have I owned? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've owned a few different brands of 22s that were semi-auto, and the Marlin wow. is the one that consistently out of the box outshot everything else. Um, for instance, I shot my, I think I was talking about it earlier, wasn't I, where I, I shot less than, well, I'm looking at my group now, I took a picture of it, and it is less, it's, uh, it's less than half an inch. Five shots in less than half an inch at 25 yards with open sights, and that was my Marlin Papoose. And I can do that same group at 50 yards with the scope. Easy. I've, wow. I've sent you guys pictures before. Yep. So a half inch at 50 yards is one MOA. I can't, I mean, every now and then I'll get lucky and squeeze out a sub, but not very often. Usually I'm hovering between one and one and a half MOA. So between a half inch and three quarters of an inch at 50 yards with any of my Marlin 795s or my Marlin Papoose. But here's the kicker, and this is the, this is the real reason why I like them. The cheapest ammo that I can possibly buy is what I do this with. I'm shooting <laughs> really? Winchester White Box, that Ugh. 555 bulk pack stuff that nobody likes, that jams in every other gun because it's got a truncated nose profile. 795 feeds it flawlessly. I never get a fail to feed. Every now and then I get a dud, but, you know, that's I, that's a ammo problem, not a rifle problem. Um, I've never had it fail to feed. They, it just it, it 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 eats them up like nothing, and it spits them out in a nice tight group. And this is the cheap crap ammo. I'm a cheap person. I've got one of the cheapest semi-auto 22s you can buy shooting the cheapest ammo you can buy, and I'm pulling off just over MOA on average at 50 yards. So that's why I that's why they're my go-to rifles. Imagine yeah. what you could do if you had good ammo and a good rifle. Just oh, kidding. I can I can do way better. <laughs> I I know I've I've done it. I mean I had Matt's uh, Volkortchen for a while, and here's yeah. the thing: I did get this twinge of want, right? I I got yeah. this twinge of jealousy and this I could have this, I could be better, I could blah blah. But you know what? At the end of the day. I'm much more comfortable taking my $189 rifle out in the woods and getting it scratched up and banged up and knowing that if I break it or anything crap happens to it, I just go to Walmart or Canadian Tire and pick up another one for less than 200 bucks and I'm I don't I don't have to worry about it being a nice gun that I'm going to wreck. I I don't have to have a nice safe clean target rifle for the range than like a beat up Kui for out in the woods. I can I can use the same rifle for both and it works great. So, the uh, n- none of them are actually. I mean, all of them are slightly modified in the sense that none of them are in their original stock anymore. The papoose is actually in the original 795 stock, and both 795s that I own are in ATI Fiberforce stocks. It's the yeah. the the Dragonoff lookalike stock, um, sort of a thumb hole grip, I guess, with a, mm-hmm. a barrel shroud in the front, but. Um, I like the look of it, and I like the ergonomics of it, which is why I did it. Um, and it's got a slightly shorter length of pull, which Jewel appreciates. But, yeah, those are my rifles. And the only thing that I don't like about them that I that they could improve on, I mean, the trigger could always be improved, and that could be said for almost any rifle. The trigger is kind of crap, especially out of the box, but just shoot it, and it gets better. Um, the safety is behind the trigger guard. <sighs> Safety's well, I thought, I thought you were going to talk about the mag release, because the mag release is kind of silly too. It's not the worst thing in the world. At least the mag release is behind the mag and not in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's that. Um, the nice thing about the mag release is it's dead simple. There's no moving parts. It's a spring. It's a, it's a, a leaf spring, so you can't wear anything out. There's no pin to break. There's no, nothing to break. You just pull back on a piece of metal that just springs back whenever you're done. So it, it's dead simple, which I do like. I like dead simple. But the safety is behind the trigger guard. <sighs> anyway, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> I live with it. But, yeah. The, the other cool feature that the Marlins uh, have is the micro groove rifling. And some people just call it a gimmick, but I got to tell you, I, I, I'm a believer. It's got 16 really small, shallow grooves instead of four or five really big, deep rifling grooves. So it distorts the bullet less and seems to give the rifles really good accuracy. 
So yeah, I mean the especially the papoose. No, not the papoose. The S seven ninety five. Uh, comes with a somewhat heavy barrel too, right? right it out, does, right yeah. It's not a super yeah. thin profile. It's sort of like a medium, a medium bull barrel almost. It's halfway between a bull barrel and a, a, a thin profile barrel. It's it's actually really nice. Mm-hmm. Yep. So cool. So yeah, seven ninety five is for me all the way, yo. What about you, Adriel? Sweet. What do you got? You got pretty much one of everything, don't you? <laughs> right now, I do. You know, if uh, if you had talked to me a month ago, I wouldn't have or. Two months ago, I wouldn't have had any uh, semi-auto 22s. Which is but, sacrilege, uh, really, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's especially when you look at how much 22 ammo I've got on yeah. hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I've, I, I, I got a Savage 64 because it was 160 bucks, and that's pretty <laughs> cheap. Uh, yeah, they so are that, blowing those things out right now. Well, they've got their A22s that are coming out. Uh, which use a rotary mag and mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sav- Savage at design those. I mean, the the 64 is old. It's a super old design. Um, they had them with uh, uh, Lakefield before and Cooey and, uh, you know, Savage is just the one is that's... It, uh, is it called the 64 because it was designed in 1964? Uh, I didn't get that far. There was no Wikipedia page uh, on it, uh, so I couldn't see, but maybe... It wouldn't Cause, surprise me because it is an old gun. I remember, like as a as a kid, looking through the Canadian Tire catalog and mm-hmm. seeing the sixty four in there. So it's been, I don't know, yeah, decades, decades yep. at least. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't like. I, I would consider the design on that one dated. Uh, it's oh, yeah. uh, uh, no bolt hold open uh, like the uh, Marlin seventy uh, not seven ninety five has, uh, as well but as then, that bolt then release again, that it has. There again, the 1022 doesn't have a bolt open hold open either. So it's an old design too. <laughs> it is also an old design. Yeah, <laughs> a better old design though. <laughs> I think the uh, the thing of the well, Savage 64, like the the one I had was really reliable. I, I was expecting reliability issues because mm-hmm. I read online all oh, the mags are are pretty bad and uh, there's all these reliability issues and I didn't have any. It it, it ran flawlessly really? even with that yeah. Winchester 555 stuff that's mm-hmm. supposed to. And and I've had jams with a bolt action rifle with, with yes. that ammo. Yeah. Uh, but it ran fine. It just it just chewed it up. Nice. Uh, yeah. The uh, the thing I I really dislike about the Savage sixty four is that it's not nearly as accurate as uh, as the other uh, like more modern uh, semi twenty twos out there. Mm. Uh, yeah. The, you weren't uh, getting some great groups with it, were you? No. The here I got a piece of paper here. Where is that? Remington. 1022 Savage, there you are. I got some really bad vertical stringing, like terrible vertical stringing out that's of it. That's usually ammo related, not gun related. Usually, that's that's your velocity difference. Um, the lower the velocity, the lower the gun will shoot, right? So usually vertical stringing. I used stringing. it on my other guns too, and it was fine. Oh yeah, well maybe there's a funny yeah. barrel whip or harmonic or something going on. Maybe there. yeah, it could be it could be harmonics or something. Mm. But, but uh usually yeah. vertical stringing is a velocity issue. Yes. Or like <laughs> like I check my scope because one of my groups I got was like like uh, two of the groups are 4 inches. It's like what's going really? on here? At 50? Yeah, at 50. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's... a little big. Bad. Yeah, and I thought like I felt bad. I'm like, man, I'm just not a good that's, shot. I that's guess that's like that's like <laughs> SKS territory, huh? <laughs> At a hundred, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty. Uh, so the accuracy wasn't that good. I don't know. So some of the listeners out there might be like, my Savage 64 is accurate, and theirs might be, and and this might just be something that's uh, that's wrong with this one. Well, and I'd again, say. right? We we I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Especially semi-auto 22s are very ammo picky. You sometimes it takes a long time to find out what it likes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I ran some SK match in here, which is expensive ammo, and I got a 4.3 inch group. Yeah. <laughs> no, it definitely doesn't like that stuff. <laughs> no. No. So yeah, some weirdness with that one. Um, what else did I shoot? I've also got a, a Remington 597 heavy barrel, uh, which. Uh, I think is maybe not as good as some of the other ones out there because the reliability I had on that one was garbage. Oh, oh yeah. my boy, yeah, so many reliability issues. So be, beyond to, beyond the guide rod springs being too tight. I I don't even see how that's like. 
okay, so that the, one they weren't tight. Um, uh, that might cause binding in the bolt if it's yes. coming back. If if those uh, if those bolts in the back there are too tight, they might torque it one way or the other, or, that, or yeah, cause it to bow or something. Yep, that's what happens. So what you'll get is you'll get fails to eject properly because it, the bolt doesn't come back fast enough mm-hmm. and sometimes because the bolt doesn't come back far enough it won't feed the next round so those are typically the two malfunctions you'll see with that if i remember correctly because trevor has one and he fixed yeah. his malfunction problem by by simply putting those those guide rod screws in properly but what, loose, you were getting some other weird malfunctions too with it weren't you yeah, and I um, I recorded it with uh, high speed video to kind of see what was going on. Yeah, uh, I've got straight up failures failures to fire where it wasn't hitting. It was it was hitting too far out on the rim. So you know, uh, with a rim fire rifle, it is like the the primer is in the uh, in the bottom like all along the rim. Yeah. Um, but you can't hit it right right on the edge because there's brass there. There's <laughs> there's no primer. And it was hitting it too far out outside on the rim, uh, so I'm not sure if that was the bolt wasn't far forward enough, or it might be uh, a misshapen firing pin too. Have a look at your firing pin and maybe. see if there's like a chip on it, because if there's a yep. slight chip on the one side, then it might not be engaging the primer properly. Yeah, um, so that was one issue, um, and another one that shows up really well on the slow mo is that it just doesn't it doesn't reliably fling the cases out so every once in a while it'll a uh, case will come back and it'll just start spinning in space and the bolt will come forward and you'll get a stovepipe so oh, yeah. i got uh throughout the day i got uh oh i don't know i want to say like five stovepipes or something yeah. um so there is that and then uh the other issue that i ran across was uh it would sometimes the bolt would hold open when there's still a round left in the magazine. Oh, now some weird. people told me, yeah, so like I would I would look at that and say like, oh, maybe the spring in there isn't uh, powerful enough, and uh, it's it's not you know the gun thinks that <laughs> the gun thinks it's empty when really it's still got that round left in there, right? Um, which I don't know if that's here or there. Some other people told me uh, you can't run the magazines with a full ten in them. You can only run them with nine, and then that'll fix it. All right. Uh, that's I don't weird. know. That shouldn't make know. any difference. And then I and then yeah. I talked to some people and they said, no, mine's like fully reliable. It never has any issues and it's super accurate. And like I didn't get fantastic accuracy out of this one either. This is a heavy barrel model, so I was expecting some you know better accuracy. But I don't know. I was averaging right around an inch kind of a thing. Uh, so yeah. I might have just gotten a, 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 a dud. So maybe uh, maybe it was entirely the rifle. Well, that happens too sometimes, right? Sometimes you just get a gun that does, just doesn't have good. If they don't have good quality control, then sometimes that happens. Yeah. And Remington isn't exactly known for their quality control as of late, so there's yep. that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and then I shot, uh, I, I, I borrowed a, a uh, takedown 1022 uh, to throw into the comparison, and it was fully reliable. Um, love uh, uh, love the uh, magazine release on the 1022. Yep. Uh, this one's got that, uh, uh, I think it's Tactical Solutions uh, magazine release that kind of goes underneath the trigger guard. And yep. you bump them, and they your magazines fall out all the time. That's got yeah. one of those. <laughs> yeah, those ones are great. <laughs> <laughs> it's very convenient. Like it's yep. it's super fast to use. Oh, but every yeah. once in a while, you bump it and you you lose a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you know, like the ten the basic ten twenty two magazine release is great too. Uh, the Remington five nine sevens mag mag release is fantastic it's up on the receiver just like imagine if you had an ar-15 same spot for a magazine release there and uh they drop free so the the mag release i really liked on the 597 i just you know didn't like the reliability and all that kind of stuff with it um i guess when it comes to ammo i just shoot whatever i've got like a bunch of federal blue box that i really like because it's copper washed and very cheap um, I've got a Gila, American Eagle, SK, Standard, and Match, some CCI. I've got a whole pile of M22 because I got some on sale. So I've got, I don't How know. How do you find that? Because I've heard some pretty horrible things about that stuff. In terms of uh, reliability or in terms of accuracy? Accuracy. Uh, let's see here. 1022 10, loved it. I got oh, yeah? a 0.69 inch group at 50 yards with that. Nice. Nice. Uh, the Remington 597s is not nearly as nice. And you know what? It's the second, no, third tightest with the uh, Savage. All right. 
Oh, not so bad. it's not terrible. So the ten twenty two really liked it. So oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's got a it's got a round uh, nose bullet, so it feeds yep. pretty well. Yeah. Um, like you were mentioning there, that Winchester five 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 stuff. Uh, it um, let's see, it ran fine in the Savage, it ran fine in the ten twenty two. I had one like I had one jam in the five nine seven with it, where I couldn't blame the five nine seven. It was the, this ammo. It was it might as well have been like a, a completely flat nose. Uh, with full diameter bullet, <laughs> it jammed up there. It's like, what are you gonna do about that? That no, was the. Exactly. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you if if you like examine the your ammo, uh, Matthew. But I find that five 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 stuff. The the I think it's the meat plat, like the the nose of the bullet where it's flat there. Yep. It's all they're all over the place. Some of them it's like that's oh, kind of small. Some of them it's huge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Their their quality control there is not great, which is why it's really cheap ammo. I'm yeah. just really lucky that my 795s will spit it out nicely anyway. But, uh, yeah, no, I have I have one of those um, uh, projectile resizers for the 22. I forget uh-huh. what they're called. It's uh, you, you stick it in your, just in a regular reloading press, and you put your your 22 shell on it, and it, push, it shoves the nose into a, a reforming die, basically. And you can either give it a really big hollow point, or you can flatten the nose like uh, 10x. Um <laughs> And huh. it, uh, I've had like not very good luck resizing the 555 bulk pack stuff to get better accuracy out of it. But I have resized other brands of ammo and it does actually improve the accuracy nicely. But, hmm. um, yeah, no, I, I remember because I, I paid extra close attention to the ends of, of the bullets whenever I was using that. And that 555 stuff is not. There's no quality control there whatsoever. <laughs> it just is what it is. <laughs> Straight out of the machine. <laughs> yeah. Just dump it into the copper wash stuff and then jam it into a bullet or into a case and off you go. <laughs> you want to sort yeah. those for weight? Nah, they'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> Sorting? We don't do that here. <laughs> no. But we make the bullets. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we've we've talked a little bit about this. If if you could build your ideal semi-automatic 22, um, what kind of what would it look like? What kind of features would it have? What kind of barrel length would it have? Optics or not? Would it have iron sights? What kind of iron sights? Um, Matthew, you, you, why don't you start? All right. So it would start off with a 16 and a half inch barrel because mm-hmm. I'd want it to be able to be sold in the states too. 16 inches is actually the ideal length, in my opinion, for a 22. That's the length at which the powder, you, you don't get any extra velocity after you hit 16 inches. So it would be a 16-inch barrel. It would definitely come with iron sights. It would have a, um, a Picatinny or, or Weaver rail built into the receiver. None of this screwing, re- screwing rails on a receiver's crap. I hate that. Um, and I don't want to have those tip-off like rimfire rails because those things are garbage. Um, the uh, three eight dovetail. Yeah, the three eight dovetail. Yeah, those things are terrible. Uh, yeah. All of all of my seven ninety fives, I have actually bought the air gun uh, scope bases because they come with a set screw in the bottom that digs into the top of your receiver to stop it from moving. Because uh, pellet guns actually are really good for for knocking scopes loose, so they put in these these set screws. So I have all of my my uh, rimfire or semi auto rimfires have uh, have these air gun scope rails but yeah no into it have a regular uh, picatinny rail it would have marlin's micro groove rifling because i really like that it would it would have the contour of the 795 barrel so sort of halfway between a bull barrel and, and a sporter barrel you don't really need that in a 1022 or in a, in a 22 because they don't really get hot enough but I like that added stiffness. You want to you want to make your barrel nice and stiff, but it doesn't need to be a full bull barrel. You don't you just don't need to carry that extra weight around. It have a thumb hole stock because I really like thumb hole stocks, and the safety would definitely be in front of the trigger guard. And I really like the idea of having the seven nine or the five nine seven style trigger. It's got a really nice trigger mechanism. Really simple, really easy to work on, and it's um, it it. It's really light and precise too. The, the the one Trevor has anyway. So, I, I'd basically take all of the features of the 795, but put the safety in the right spot, shorten the barrel, and put the 597 trigger in it, <laughs> and then put a, a proper rail on top. That's Sweet. that. I would think that would be my ideal. And and I I really like the idea of having the iron sights on there as well with quick release scope rings. You can just 
pop off your scope and go irons if you want to. Now, if, for the irons, would you do like a traditional blade? Would it yes. be right in the middle? Yeah, blade? I, I've, yep, I would do traditional. I've shot peep sights through 22 before, and peep sights are more accurate. They really are. I've, I've experimented with both to see what I can shoot better, and I do shoot peep sights better. But here's the thing. I like shooting my 22s at extended distances. I'm talking out three, four, five hundred meters. Yeah. And with a peep sight, you can't really do Kentucky windage and still see your target. You have to actually aim over your target and you can no longer see your target. Well, I've developed my own personal technique of Kentucky windage where I put the blade of the front target or of the front sight on my target and I just drop the rear of the rifle and I sometimes am able to use the reflection in the barrel to line up the rear notch. It's sort of it's kind of hard to explain but oh. you can huh. try it sometimes. You might see what I mean. And even if I can't, that my peripheral vision will allow me to center that nicely. And so I'm instead of actually aiming over the target, I still look at it and I just know how far to drop the rear sight. And you can't do that with a peep sight. You, you can only do that with a, a blade and notch. So I prefer the blade and notch. But that's just personal preference. Hmm. Kelly, what? what uh, how would you build your ideal 22? Well, I pretty much have built my ideal 20, 22. But um, I look at other people's too. Like uh, I know that Rick um, Kedebeck has a really nice one. His it has a Hogue stock on it. And a Delask carbon rock um, barrel, and it is sweet. It's super accurate too. Um, if so I was, w- would you add the feature of last shot bolt hold open on your twenty two if you could? Sorry. Would you would you imp- or would you include the last shot bolt hold open feature if you could? I, I would actually. Yeah. I, I yeah. really I really would. I think that's really the ten twenty two's only flaw these days. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, like you guys have been saying, they have really tightened up their tooling and they have gotten some good barrels on those things recently because they are starting to really shoot nicely. They are. Um, If that's the and I love the rotary mags, the 10 round rotary mags are amazing. They feed so well and And they don't. Yes, they don't stick out the bottom of the guns. They don't jam you in the back when you put your rifle over your shoulder when you're hopping a fence or something. So, yeah. I just I love mine, but if I I would, yeah, getting a nice you know a Delask barrel that's a bull barrel that's uh, wrapped. It's yeah. Yeah, you or, get the stiffness of the bull barrel, but you get no, the lightweightness of because that's a word lightweightness of of yep. the carbon fiber. <laughs> it is a word. <laughs> it is it's um, a word now. Yeah. So I really like his. I like every. I yeah. It's getting really bad where I <laughs> I tend to like certain features of different peoples or I, I covet everyone's guns. I like everybody's. <laughs> yeah. So, but the reality is a 1022 is you, you can, there's so many different parts there aftermarket yeah. parts that you can change it up and build it as much. So the, like everything that I could do to my 1022 has been done to it. Nice. Basically. So I love mine. Um, I love the fact that it does have a scope on it. I like scopes. I'm old. Uh, Trevor would agree with that. I'm old. I need a scope, right? Uh, and I also like the fact that you can get the extended mag release. You can do one of the bad things about a factory um, 1022 is the bolt, right? Yeah. It's awful. Have a new shooter try and work that out. Like it's we actually ridiculous. Ha- yeah, we had people who were experienced shooters, and they're going, "Can you come over here and show us on the bolt release, please?" Yeah. Anyways. So have you have you upgraded to the auto bolt on yours? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and yeah, that's the one thing that I would recommend everybody do. Yes, that um, and a Volkhorst and extractor are my two exactly. number one recommendations. Yep. Yep. So if you could do that, and if you do, I like my um, mag release as well. It is the paddle one that is at yep. the front, and it just you. F- you flip it and your magazines drop straight out of it. So yep. as I said, I've built it or we've built it so that it's, you know, my ultimate 1022 right now. Well, maybe, almost. yeah, almost. almost. I, you know, it's always <laughs> nice. You can always see other people's guns and you're going, that's, right. hmm, that's nice. 
I would like that. Like, I would like a Volkarsen. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I would covet, you know, it's but it's $2,000. But then again, when you look at the rifle that I have, it's probably got $2,000 worth of it, yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's $2,000 anyways, right? Yep. It's just, do you want, do you spend 100 at a time or do you spend all 2000 at once? That's sort Correct. of. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But as I said, I, I've i seen a lot of different, um, particularly 1022s, because that's the most popular, on the line. And, like, on the line? Certain, <laughs> yeah. On the, well, on, no, on when the you're, line. On the line when you're on, you know, the apple seed or maple seed yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, I thought you were saying like online, like no, <laughs> you're, just, on you're just putting the in everything these days just to irritate Trevor. <laughs> the line or yeah. on the web or on and, oh. no. the interwebs. On the interwebs. <laughs> so when you see them on the line, we're going. I'm. I. I look at them and I'm going. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to have that. But yeah, no. But I think I've actually. I'm good with what I have. That's it's good. it's it fits me. It works. It's perfect. What about you, Adriel? What, what's your ideal twenty-two? Hmm. I'm gonna go a little bit different than yours. I'm gonna go with something uh, where the stock is uh, has got a comb made for a scope. Right. So it's not. Um, you know, I always find with uh, with twenty-twos, mm. there's there's ones that are made for iron sights. Mm-hmm. There yep. are ones that are made for scopes. Yep. yep. And Trying to do the wrong one with the the wrong it's stock ridiculous. is ridiculous. Uh, well, the yeah. worst the worst example ever was that FVSR I got that Savage Mark II. It doesn't yeah. even come with iron sights, and it had the the biggest drop on a twenty two scope oh, yeah. uh, stock I've ever seen. Like I was, I, I could hardly even get a chin weld. I had to like, t- <laughs> it was ridiculous. So anyway, yeah, yeah, no. So you're definitely scoping out yours then. No irons oh, yeah. for you. Yeah, no irons, full like straight over to the scope yep. with a, a a high comb on the stock, so that mm-hmm. you pr- you get a proper <laughs> cheek weld. A proper weld. cheek weld. Cheek yeah. weld. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, you know, um, that's what I see a lot with seventeen HMRs. The more mm-hmm. inexpensive yeah. seventeen HMRs come with iron sights, and it's like, why? What's the would point? There's no I point in seventeen with iron sights. Yeah. I'm not gonna shoot well, a seventeen do, but... HMR with iron sights. Exactly. Yeah. So even with my 22, I'd have something that's uh, made for a scope. Uh, I would uh, I would definitely like to uh, to have a receiver that's got the uh, uh, pick rail machined into the top. Yes. Yeah. If not, like drilled and tapped for standard bases out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just not the dovetail. <laughs> well, this is your um, ideal, right? So you can just go ahead and say machined into the receiver, because <laughs> it'll be it'll, Matthew. It'll be so expensive if I do that, <laughs> even on my dream rifle. <laughs> I gotta be price conscious here. Uh, uh, yeah, so no, I, don't. either either or. <laughs> uh, let's see. Probably, probably like a standard plastic stock, uh, just because I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the heck out of it. So yeah. it might as well not look nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If I had to, if I had to have a nice looking one, it would have to have one of those Boyd stocks on there. Either the uh, oh, let's see. I had the extreme one uh that was that thumb hole stock one i wouldn't like yeah. like the grip and i don't really like i you know after shooting I, thumb hole stocks i don't really like thumb hole no stocks. yeah i don't no. like them either and i also don't like the cheek weld as well on them i like them i don't I, I my, my gripe with them is that they're not left hand friendly most of the time true because they're and, they're beveled yep yeah yep yeah and, uh, to use your thumb, like let's say, let's look at that Savage. Uh, yeah. So I've got a Savage BT. Yes, it's got a thumbhole stock, and it's got a safety up on the receiver on, on the right the, hand side. Yeah, on the wrong side. So yeah. am I supposed to use my thumb? Well, you can't because it's in the thumbhole stock. That's so I end right. up using my index right finger, which is stupid. Well, if Just you're going to have a thumbhole stock, you got to have the safety in front of the trigger guard where it mm-hmm. belongs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mine's not going to have a thumbhole stock though. It's just no. going to have a standard stock, and it's going to have. That's it. That's gonna have. It's gonna I have know. Nothing. He, he just I would gone. Do. So Can't have a. Ta- I'll have. I'll have a tank safety. Yeah. Gonna tank work, safety. So. Really. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, uh, my thumb is up there anyways, and uh, okay. my trigger, like my, I, I don't have to move my index finger whatsoever. Right. It's not. It won't. It wouldn't work on a twenty-two. But this is my imaginary uh, twenty-two. You can. You can make that work on a twenty-two. Come on. <laughs> That's not impossible to get done. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for mags, probably I'd probably use the Ruger 1022 mags. They're Those uh, are great they're, mags. Yeah. yeah, and they don't have the 
nonsense of uh, being able to not fit in that tenth round or or whatnot. Yep. Ah, you know. What? So, oh, oh. Mm, well, we're in Canada, so the ten twenty two mags be limited to ten. So. Maybe some other mag that allows you to run the 25 round mag. Well, that is the nice thing about the 795 still is I can still get the the, the 25 round mags for it. So mm-hmm. I do still have a couple of those. So that is the one nice thing. I don't have to worry about the bull crap that the RCMP is coming up with these days. So at least until yeah. they come up with a pistol version of the 795, which they better <laughs> not do. <laughs> yeah. So what would your <laughs> ideal scopes be for 22s? Mm, probably like a two to seven, a yeah. two to seven, or like that's, a three to nine. That's my ideal too. I, I really yep. like a two to seven. It's a perfect range yep. in my opinion. It's yep. close Something, enough for those close uh, shots, but it's it's also you can seven power is long enough to get out to. Well, I mean, I've shot quite a distance with them, so seven. Well, power and is with, good. with gophers, um, it's handy to have a little bit more magnification, so you can kind of see yep. what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, with without enough magnification, it, it can be kind of hard and. <laughs> you see a lot of a lot of like horse crap in the field that looks like yeah. a gopher. <laughs> yes, yeah, I shot at a few of those last year, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not really supposed to shoot at what you don't know, but like that's yeah. like well, it's a gopher. gopher. It's a gopher-looking yeah. object out in the field. It's probably safe to shoot. Yeah. And if it hen- ends yeah. up being horse crap, well, that didn't hurt nothing, now did it? <laughs> no, just extra target practice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd run a, a, a two seven or a three to nine, probably. Um, I don't know if it would be necessary, but adjustable parallax. Oh, absolutely. Too. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. That is definitely necessary. Because yeah, you're definitely. shooting a lot of uh, a lot of the center fire. A lot of the, the really nice quality scopes out there have fixed parallax, and that parallax is usually fixed at like 125, yep. 125 yep. yards. Um, yep. And you're with a 22, you you're typically shooting, you know, 25, maybe 50 yards. If, kind well, of yeah. if, it's a, if it's a dedicated rimfire scope, it's usually parallax set to 50 if it's not 50. adjustable. Yep. Yeah, but, but the I, dedicated... Rimfire scopes are like there's not really a lot of good ones. No, there are a right. lot of really good center fire de- uh, um, scopes. Yeah. So, it'd well, be one nice of my favorite rimfire scopes right now is that Bushnell AR22. Yeah, oh, really? and what's really that? Like that one fixed or is it? Uh, no, it's adjustable? a two to seven, two to seven with adjustable parallax with uh, target turrets, and the target huh. turrets are stiff enough that you don't accidentally bump them whenever it's just in the gun case. Like, they're exposed. That's the one downside to it that I don't like. I would rather them be under a cover, but they don't bump easily, and they're they're zero resettable. So you can you set them up where you want them, then you can pull the turret off and set it at zero. So even if it does get bumped, a quick glance up, and you can reset them both to zero, and you're good again. But, um, but yeah, adjustable parallax in 2 to 7, and it has a BDC, bullet drop compensator. And it mm-hmm. is almost dead on with my ammo. So zero at 50, and then each notch out is another 25 yards, I think. And it goes all the way out to 125 or 150, something like that. Sweet. Yeah, one of those. Yep, <laughs> definitely. And it's not super long either. It's sort of a, like not quite a compact scope, but not a full length either. So it looks really good on a 22 as well, because 22s aren't typically very long guns. So I don't like yeah. seeing full-size scopes on them because they look kind of ungainly. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And yeah, I'd probably run a, a pretty short barrel as well because yeah. I like the uh, I like shorter barrels on the twenty two. I just I don't see the point in in mm-hmm. having like an enormous barrel. Well, back in the day when they were running just irons, it made sense to lengthen the barrel because you get a longer uh, radius. Yeah, longer sight radius. sight radius. But everybody yeah. running scopes these days, you know, you you just don't need it. Well, I had one of those. Uh, super short, the Savage Mark IIs, but it was like a 13-inch barrel, and mm-hmm. it had the original, like just regular iron sight, so, you know, halfway down the barrel, and then on the barrel on the muzzle, and so the sight radius was like 8 inches, not even. Like, it was ridiculously short, but I was still able to hit rocks out at two, 300 yards within a couple of shots with it, so even still, a, a short sight radius doesn't necessarily mean you're super limited. It's just not going to be great for extreme target shooting. Yeah. Yep. All right. What do we think? Have we, uh, have we killed this topic? I think so. I think Pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Why don't we go on to uh, listener feedback? Cool. Uh, Matthew, do you want to take the first one from Jordan? Of course. I'm in the middle of a text, so why not? I'll just pull this back up here. Ah, from Jordan. He says, hey, guys. 
Just a quick update or correction on the NEA-102. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I got this totally wrong last week. It's an AR-10 type non-restricted semi-auto chambered in 308, not 223 or 556. I'm sure you've already already been updated by someone else. Yeah, I updated myself. As soon as I was done the show, I went and looked into it because uh, Owen was asking me about it and he wanted some more info on it. But um, yeah, that's it's an AR-10 type gun and i totally should have known that but i didn't so i apologize for screwing that up last week uh he finishes off with i love the show and look forward to new episodes every week so thank you jordan for the update yep. and the fix and the correction yep and those any to eight two uh 102s are all, all sold out of course <laughs> of course yep. they are yeah yep. they were sold out within a few hours yeah that's what i heard anyways it's a well fantastic price for a set like none oh absolutely yeah yeah. 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 Uh Kelly, did you want to take this one from Liz? Okay, from Liz the Green Gunny. She says, "My husband made me listen, but now I'm hooked. I look forward every week uh, now and have to tell him when the new episode is posted." On another note, I hear you talking about Gannon Sports uh having a new indoor range. Uh my son asked when he went in and found out they're getting rid of the air zone um that was in the back of Gannon and putting in Putting the range there. I uh, don't know the full logistics of the setup. Just a uh, tidbit of info. Keep up the entertainment. Don't ever change. Thanks, Liz, the Green Gunny. So that was that was one. So we got one right. wife sending sending in an email saying that she listens to us because right. her husband. So that we got one. So we asked for we wanted more. <laughs> we got one. So Liz, you win. <laughs> You're the winner. She is um, the winner. And the rest of y'all, come on. Type us an email. Tell us that your husband makes you listen and that you love us so much and that Trevor's funny looking. <laughs> and Matthew's good looking. Of course I am. My mother <laughs> tells me. So We've I know all got true. faces for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, if you want to send the show an email, send it over to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Did you hear that, wives? That's slamfireradio at gmail.com. <laughs> Hey, why isn't yeah. your wife sending us an email? Because everybody knows that she doesn't listen either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's no new iTunes reviews this week, but if you want to leave yep. us an iTunes review, check us out on uh, iTunes or even on uh, whatever Android version you use. Some of them have uh, rating systems built into it, so go ahead and leave us a, a rating there. Uh, we've got 152 five-star ratings so far, 119 in Canada, 30 in the U.S., one Australian, one from the U.K., one Lithuanian, and one Belgium. And uh, thanks uh, very much to everyone who's already rated, uh, rated us. Uh, Shout-outs, anyone? Yeah, I got one. It's to the Rodden, uh, Napity Rod Gun Club for putting on an amazing event, and the ladies loved it. And to the ladies who made the pie, I they like were pie. delicious. Oh, I my like God, pie. they were good. I want some pie. <gasps> Was there blueberry pie? There was blueberry pie. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna. There die. was there was also cheesecake pie, oh, and then you got to put homemade blueberry man. sauce on it. What? The? And then and they had coconut cream pie, and they oh, had no, lemon gonna... meringue pie, and then they had oh, apple lemon pie, meringue. Oh. and they had chocolate pie. I'm going out for pie now. I want some pie. It was good. I like pie. It was good. Pie. They also had brownies. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> they also had brownies. Oh. It was awesome. All right. Who else has shout outs? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, one to Jason S. for uh, coming out to the range with me and having a good time shooting 22s. And one to Mark P. for, uh, yeah, going out for dinner and that kind of thing. And good. for the corn. And <laughs> no the corn, corn yet. No and corn. also Mark P. from me, but the other Mark P. for lending me his rifle to make the review on. So that's Sweet. Mark Price, not Mark P. with the awesome corn. Yes. And steak. And steak. I guess the steak was all right, but the oh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Patreon supporters, uh, we don't have any new ones, but we have how many do we? How many are we even up to right now? I can't count past six, so it's lots. Oh, it's way past there. Oh yeah. Well, if we pull open the other note there, we'd build it. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Sixty-six patrons. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And we're gonna yeah. put out another yeah. Patreon show soon. Soon as Rob gets off his butt and wakes up in time down in Australia to have a show with us, it's basically his fault right now. All he has to do is wake up at three in the morning, and we're that, good to go. Like whatever. I mean, come on. How hard can it possibly be? Apparently, for the four of us, pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a mistake. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, if, if you go to uh, either our website, slamfireradio.com, or to Patreon, uh, uh, our Patreon page is patreon.com slash slamfireradio. Uh, we've got an area there where people can help support the show, and we can do fun stuff like uh, upgrade Matthew's computer so he's able to edit shows faster. Yay! I or... can't wait. <laughs> it's pretty quick. I've just oh. been installing some of the uh, uh, recording software we use here on it nice. as we've been recording, and it's it's quick. Oh, it's got I, can, some... oh, I can't wait. This thing is such a dinosaur right now. It's amazing how quickly computers go to crap, huh? How long yeah. have you had it? I don't know. Uh, five years. Wow. Probably it is longer. a dinosaur. Probably longer. Yeah. No. It's yeah. it's yeah. Five years. Yeah. But anyway. Yep. Uh, yeah. So if you go there, we can uh, you can help support the show there, and we've got uh, special Patreon only uh, episodes that you can listen into. And you uh, also get you patches and stickers. Yes. You also get for patches. The, and do it for the stickers. Yeah. I've got another batch sitting on my. Uh, a patch Sitting batch? On a, coffee table. No, a patch batch. A patch yep. batch, a batch of patches. <laughs> uh, what is this? It looks like about 10 or 12 here. So if you haven't gotten your patch in the mail, it's, it's going to be in the mail today. Yep. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, any uh, any last? Oh, wait a minute. we got some more here. I just need to scroll down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please join one or more of our national firearms associations, such as the CCFR or the CSSA. It's important to support them and make sure that they're uh, uh, keeping our rights in mind. Uh, get out and shoot some IPSC. Take, take a maple seed challenge. Shoot some three-gun. Bust some sporting clays. Go out and uh, blast a gopher in the face. Oh, or, yeah. i got to uh, do that some... again. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm going to ship my 795 out, I think, man. Yeah. I think so. I think it makes sense to do that. It might, yeah. yeah. If you want to like really kill them in in yeah. bulk, semi twenty two can be the way to go. Because you have you have that five 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 stuff out there, right? I got a pile of it. Yeah. <coughs> Beauty. Yep. Yeah. All right. It'll shoot it. <laughs> It'll shoot it. <laughs> That'll kill face. a gopher. <laughs> yeah. Check us out on uh, Gun Owners of Canada. It's a forum that you can go to. We've got a thread over there where we post our shows, and like us on Facebook. We're at 1,678 <laughs> likes. <laughs> Just one last, one last little one there. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, and Facebook's also where you'll get some of our other content, like, uh, you know, Matthew just posted uh, uh, a grouping that he got with his uh, uh, three-odd-three three, uh, three odd rifle three. there. Yep. 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 So. <laughs> Tree-odd-tree. And he posted a picture Your of tree his, tree. his rifle, too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Then. All right. So is that let's it? Let's cap this thing off. Yeah, yeah I think we're done. It's awkward, right. so let's... Okay. Is it, it's awkward, is so it? we're done. That's, is it awkward, is it awkward yet, awkward? though? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It has to get, like, real awkward first. Well, yeah. that's usually Trevor's department. Oh, and he's not here, so... <laughs> well, that that was awkward. Yeah. Oh. We'll just have to put in a suboptimal effort. Yeah, that, wasn't, that won't be hard. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm not putting in much of an effort as it is. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun. Well, there we go. That'll be it then. The awkward (laughs) pause. That's where we end. (laughs) All right, so are we uh, are we waiting for anything sp- sp- particular? Like that, like that, just like that. Yeah, glad I got that recorded. You recording? Yeah. You recording, Matthew? Yeah. 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 Cool. Everything, everything is. Hello good. and welcome. Oh to my goodness, I'm in the middle of. I didn't Slam even finish radio. talking, and you're like flying away. <laughs> Here we go. Now, try. What are we? Two eleven this week? Yeah, two eleven. I hear a lot of crackling. Do you? Who is it? And, it? and it's not my chest. <laughs>